I want to take you through a quick tour of Morningstar.com. Morningstar.com is a company that rates mutual funds, also provides information on individual stocks. But in this tutorial, let's just take a look at some of their information on uh, mutual funds. So you can begin by typing in Morningstar.com. And there is a premium edition, which provides additional information. But a, there's a lot of good information that is free on the website. And you can begin here by typing in the fund or the company that you're interested in analyzing. If you know the ticker for your, for your mutual fund, you can do that. Here I'm going to look at the Vanguard 500 Index Admiral Fund. And you can see over here it tells you what the ticker is, the ticker symbol. And if we click that on, we get this opening page that provides some general information. It has a chart here which shows you how the fund is performed. The fund is in blue. It's very hard to see that because it is tracking the S&P 500 index, which is in, in green, kind of a, a, a yellowish green, and, and large, uh, large blend funds, which would be large companies that are categorized as both growth, fund, growth stocks and, and uh, value stocks. So it's kind of hard to see that because it tracks it fairly perfectly. In some funds, you'll see quite a difference between the two. So as we work through this, there's a lot of information provided here. The net asset value, the yield would be the dividend yield. If there's any load fee, that's a fee for buying into the fund. The amount of assets the fund has, its expenses, 0.05%, which is very low, and they even tell you the fee level, and how much the fund turns over and whether the fund is open or not. Some funds will close to new investors. Minimum investment is $10,000. And if you go through here, there's a number of different things you can look at. In fact, let's scroll down here first. If we scroll down, they give you some performance comparisons to the S&P 500 tracking index and they underperform most of the time just by a hair because it, this is a real fund that has real expenses, real commission costs, etc., which the theoretical S&P 500 index does not have. You'll also see how they rank in their category. Okay, pretty good. There's lots of mutual funds in the category and they're, you know, usually in the upper quarter. And they can show, they show you the top holdings. And this fund tracks the S&P 500 index, so it holds stocks um, in the proportion that they're they're held in the S&P 500 and the biggest company in the S&P 500 is Apple so therefore it makes up the biggest weight Exxon Mobil is the second biggest okay GE etc and they show you the sectors okay technology um, financial services etc and their percentages all right if you go up back up here there's several tabs you can click on. You can get a nicer chart, and this is a little bit easier to see because it's a little bigger. You can see here that over the between in 2000, late 2011 on the fund itself and the S&P were actually beating the category of large large cap blend funds. Okay, uh, we can go. Here, there's a little plus sign here. That means that's that's a paid subscription service. So if we click that on, you'll see that it tells you, you know, you have to subscribe. So that's something that if you're interested in, you'll have to pay to get. They have performance. And so you can get information on the performance of the fund, and they show it for several, several years. They show how it compares to um, the S&P 500, as well as its category, which is large blend. Okay, and you can you can see it in a different kind of chart here. You can look at ratings and risk. This is a this can be quite useful. They give you their star rating. Okay, four stars is very good. They give you some modern portfolio theory statistics, things like R squared, beta, alpha, which is a measure of of whether the fund is beating its benchmark here it's just slightly below the benchmark 
because the benchmark is what it's trying to match and again this this is a fund that has real expenses some other measures of of um, risk or return uh, the trainer ratio which is a measure of excess return to risk which is very similar to the sharp ratio uh, another measure of excess return to risk standard deviation okay average return and you can look at it for five years three years five years you know ten years or fifteen years so you can get you can get this information um, in many places here okay or for many different periods you can also see who's managing the fund the fund managers you can click on portfolio and it'll show you how the fund is broken up okay 98 percent in US stocks a little bit in cash a little bit non US stocks they have to hold a little bit of cash simply because people will redeem shares okay expenses is an interesting category look at how low the expenses are compared to the average in the category very very low okay and they even project how much it will cost you per ten thousand dollars invested over three years the fund is projected to take out only sixteen dollars um, in expenses over five years 28 over 10 years 64 that is very very little per ten thousand dollars invested okay they tell you what their expense ratio is there are things called 12 b1 fees which are marketing fees they don't have that okay etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, they give you some tax analysis here this is a pretty tax efficient fund because they don't buy and sell a lot it has a very small turnover for the portfolio okay and they give you information on purchasing uh, shares etc cetera, etc cetera. okay how much it costs to buy in ten thousand any additional purchases have to be at least a hundred dollars okay where you can where you purchase from where they are where Vanguard is also um, their phone number and their website and if you're interested in any other filings they have see is that going to come up here we go um, prospectus summary prospectus um, other information that you want may want to look at annual report um, if you were buying the fund now let's compare that to a second fund which I've already called up here CGM focus fund let me go to the uh, home page here and again I'm going to type in CGM and I'm going to look at CGM focus fund and a little slow with the internet here and you can see you get this chart and you can see there's no dividend yield there's no load 1.5 billion in assets 1.05 percent in expenses Vanguard I think was 0.05 percent the fee level is about average their portfolio turnover is quite high almost 500 percent 496 percent so that means that this fund manager buys securities when when they go up he quickly sells them off okay or if they're falling and he feels that they're going to fall further he quickly sells them off the status is open so you can invest in this fund and the minimum investment is 2500 you can see the chart this chart is a little clearer to see which is that the fund actually did very well early on okay peaking in maybe 2008 or so and then since it's fallen off although had you invested back in 2002 you'd still be ahead of the S&P 500 okay but right now they're only giving it a one star rating because it's just hasn't performed quite as well let's take a look at uh, some of the ratings and risk if you look at the company's beta compared to the S&P 500 they are much riskier than the S&P 500 okay 1.48 if you have a beta equal to 1 you have essentially the same risk as the S&P 500 okay and then some of the other categories Let's take a quick look at expenses expenses you can see quite a bit higher okay around average for their category but look at how much money they're taking out per $10,000 invested 
uh, over a three-year period, $334. If you recall from the S&P 500, they only took out $16. Is it worth paying this fund manager the extra fees for managing the fund? Well, only if he or she can outperform the S&P 500. So one of the one of the reasons for investing in an index fund is they have very low expenses. And while you can't be sure who's going to do better in terms of picking stocks for the portfolio, you can be sure if they keep expenses down that they're likely to to do better. So this is a quick tour of of the mutual fund side of, of Morningstar's site. And in the next tutorial, I will take you through looking at some of the individual, the, comp the information they have on individual companies.